What's going on, y'all? As you can already see, I did go to Monday Night's football game between the Commanders and the Eagles at the link. And unfortunately, did not go our way for a multitude of reasons, which I'm going to get into. But before I do, make sure you like, subscribe, click the notification bell so you know every time I drop a video. Uh, I'm so angry, I don't even want to talk about the Raiders and the press conference that Derek Carr had after that. Yet another excruciating loss. But we're going to hop into the Eagles, who also unfortunately lost in Week 10. 31 to 21 against the Commanders. Really, it was a what seven points, a 26 to to 21 game. That the the six points at the end of the game was because of a fumble on the you know the lateral dink and dunk stuff. Where, you know, game was over. But looking at the stats, <clears throat> Jalen Hurts 17 to 26 for 175 yards, two touchdowns, one interception that really wasn't his fault on a very good pass to um to Brown. That, let's be real, I'm going to get into exactly what happened on that. For a 94.2 rating, uh, Taylor Heineke, 17 for 29, 211 yards, no touchdowns, one interception, three sacks for 33 yards, 66.9 passer rating. Didn't do anything special, but he kept them in the game. He did just enough to be able to get them over the hump there. One thing I want to talk about that showed out, up out of three things was the run defense. That's something that reared his ugly head today. We've seen some issues with that ever since Jordan Davis went down with that ankle injury. Today, Brian Robinson had 26 carries for 86 yards and a touchdown. Antonio Gibson had 14 carries for 44 yards and a goal line touchdown. Their objective was to run the ball, run, 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 and they had exactly the right game plan coming into this game because that's been our one weak spot. The secondary, again, was pretty sharp for the most part this game, but that rush defense really became a liability out there. <clears throat> so you look at the way they were able to rush compared to our lack of rushing attempts. They had 49 attempts total on the ground, whereas we only had 20 attempts total on the ground. Miles Sanders only had 12 carries, 12 carries for 54 yards. Jalen Hurts had six carries for 28 yards and a touchdown. He only had one more carry than T Taylor Heineke. Kenneth Gainwell only had one carry. Boston Scott only had one carry. So I don't understand how you get away from your identity as a run first team, one of the best rushing teams in the league behind one of the best offensive lines in the league. You get away from that, whereas the Washington Commanders, they come in and more so than maybe they have in past games this year, they put the the pedal on the metal in the run game and really tried to run the ball over our defense, and they had some decent success with it. Even though they were only averaging about 3.1 yards a carry, um, they stayed committed to the run all night long. I was out there, and I could see that. Everybody in the stands could see that clear as day. So I don't know why... Jonathan Gannon did not notice that and why Sirianni didn't want to run the ball as much. Secondly, I want to go ahead and look at turnovers. That's something that you can't have. It's, it's a little bit sloppy. Now, the first turnover was, um, I believe, that was the one to A.J. Brown. That's in the second quarter. Now, we forced a fumble early in the game on them. We got a touchdown. They responded back. Then we got another touchdown. They got a field goal. It's 14-10. Boom. We still, if you're if you're at the game and you're watching it on TV, the Eagles look like they have the momentum. They clearly have the control of the game. But on that drive <clears throat> in the second quarter with about nine minutes left, <clears throat> Jalen Hurts drops back and he goes up top on a deep pass to A.J. Brown. And it had to be at least 50 yards. And he, he throws it. With some air under it, he drops it right in the bread basket. And it was kind of hard to see in real time when we were out there. But it hit A.J. Brown in the hands and then deflected into Forrest's hands, the guy who intercepted the ball. So that was actually a very, very good and accurate pass by Jalen Hurts, who was actually very accurate on the deep ball all night long. And there's going to be another turnover that's going to stick to this theme that I'm going to get to. But the second turnover was the one, and this is <clears throat> one of many egregious calls by the, the referees or lack thereof, 
he hit Dallas Goddard over the middle. And as da- Goddard was going to uh, engage the defender, they go to tackle him. One defender's tackling him, and then another one is pulling his face mask to the point where it looks like his head's going sideways. And he fumbles the ball on the way down. And on that play, unbeknownst to us at the moment, he injured his shoulder. So he's going to be out, I think, uh, uh, multiple weeks. But it was it was so blatant that they missed that call. And that turnover was, was at a critical spot in the game. Because <clears throat> you're trying to reestablish momentum. You're, you're down 23-21. And that's where you had that fumble at. It's, that's just it's wild to me, fam. Because you fumbled the ball at at the the, the Philadelphia 30, 34-yard line. We're in our territory. We, we get a nice pass. And, man, listen. That's that's just, um, it was bad. It was bad. Because you get that, that pass, and maybe he goes for another three, four yards. You're at the 38, and then you tack on a 15-yard face mask penalty along with that. Now, all of a sudden, you're at midfield or possibly a couple yards into enemy territory. Completely changes the whole mindset of uh, of your play calling on offense. It, it changes the momentum of the game. As opposed to now, they have the ball in our territory at our 34-yard line, which is just insane to me. right? And then they come down and get a field goal. It's, it's 26-21. to 21. And then, again, now we go to the third turnover. That really killed us. Now, like I said before, Jalen Hurts was really accurate with the deep ball all night. And he dropped back. And we saw him go deep. We saw, especially when we were sitting up on a 200 level, you could look down and see Quez Watkins just streaking free over the middle of the field. Nobody within 5 to 10 yards of him. And Jalen airs it out. <clears throat> he catches the ball. And as the defender catches up with him, he goes for the tackle. And as he comes to the ground, he fumbles the freaking ball. Boom. Turnover. You, <clears throat> you're sitting there in their territory after a big catch. And then you do, you commit a cardinal sin and you turn the ball over with the fumble. Just negate the, the huge play you just had. You cannot have that against a team that is clearly not as talented as you, but you're keeping them in the game by making constant mistakes along with the referees missing a lot of calls. And then <clears throat> thirdly, the third point would be the officiating, which was horrible all night. One, with the Dallas Goddard face mask that was missed. And then two, there was a, a big play at the end that they missed <clears throat> where we got the sack on Hines, Heineke, right? is fourth quarter... You got them on third down. They drop back the pass. And you play really good coverage. And you force a covered sack. And as Heineke goes, I guess, take a knee and fall down, Brandon Graham slides over and hits him. Not really that hard. But they call a rough in the passer penalty. Or stuff, unnecessary roughness, whatever. Penalty on Brandon Graham. Boom. New set of first downs, game over. Because we had just used our our second or third timeout at that point. And we passed a two-minute morning, and now we can't stop the clock anymore. Game over. Everybody on TV saw that, and they were probably, especially people that bet on the game, probably flipping their TV screens at that point. It was just so bad. So you had a mixture of different things that led up to this loss. But one thing that I want to talk about before we end this video is the defensive play calling. I talked about the lack of commitment to the run game in in this loss, but I also want to talk about Jonathan Gannon and what I didn't see in this matchup against a team that's really not that good on offense, right? You have Terry McLaurin, who, though the commanders are not very popular across the league, Terry McLaurin might be one of the best NFL receivers out there. Runs great routes, really fast, He's really a tough cover. He had eight catches for I think a buck twenty-eight last night. <sighs> Curtis Samuels did not do anything, even with Avante Maddox out. But the fact that you were giving them so much cushion at times and really not blitzing at all. They might have blitzed six or seven times in that game. I can't really recall, but they 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 blitz very infrequently. Especially against a team that wants to be run heavy. I didn't see any run blitzes. I didn't see, I saw too much 
of a uh, too much off coverage. I didn't see enough pressing. Uh, I didn't see enough uh, man press at the line. I mean, at times you can play uh, cover two shell, not necessarily zone, but cover two man shell, two safeties over the top. Mix it up. Get up in a guy like McLaurin's face here and there. Okay, because there are a couple plays where he had easy releases off the line, especially on a slant route. It was one third round, third down, and he got an, a free release on a slant route. And I, I and from up where I was sitting, I couldn't tell if they were playing man coverage or if they were playing like a, a cloud flat. I couldn't tell what Slay was playing, but he obviously gave him a free release, and it was an easy slant, p- pitch and catch. And I just didn't see the adjustments defensively. Because this Washington team did not have anything special besides Terry McLaurin. And they did a lot of motion pre-snap, moving the receiver up and down the line, trying to decipher whether they're getting man coverage or zone coverage. And they they gave themselves the best opportunity pre-snap every play to try to maximize the amount of yards they could get with the weapons that they had. A lot of pre-snap motion a lot of smoke and mirrors, and you have to give them credit. They came out and did just enough to be able to put up points to win this game. So that's the way I saw it. I think that they'll be able to make the adjustments, but one, we need Jordan Howard back as soon as possible. Two, we have to see where Avante Maddox is with the hamstring injury. Hopefully he's not too dinged up going into next week's game. And then three, we have to get Goddard back because I think that's a big loss going into the next three, four, five games, however long he's going to be out. Because if you have a tight end in with those wide receivers, that's that's damn near impossible to cover. So now you're going to have to wonder if, you know, Jack Stoll is cool, but he's he's not going to be that dynamic playmaker you have in Dallas Goddard. So you have to wonder if they come out in more four wide receiver sets, let's say. And maybe they run some of the read option out of the shotgun with a four wide receiver set. Maybe they play, play play a little bit of more of a spread offense. We don't we don't know. So I'll be interested to see what adjustments they make there. So coming up, they have the Colts next week on the twentieth, one o'clock CBS. Uh, that's in Indianapolis. And then they have the Packers, who looked a lot better against the Cowboys on Sunday night. So we're playing them on uh, the twenty seventh, eight uh, prime time, eight twenty. Then we play the Titans on the 4th of December. And then we play the Giants up in New York um, or the Meadowlands, whatever, on 12-11 at 1 o'clock. So we have, I would say, two teams that you're really going to have to keep an eye on. That being the Packers, who I think they're starting to gel just a little bit. They still have their issues, but they're starting to gel a little bit. Some of those young wide receivers are starting to step up. And then the Giants, who continue to find a way to win because, oops, surprise, look, they're 7-2. and two. They are one game behind us right now. You can't sleep on that team. Dallas is Dallas. Um, they're still 6-3. and three. They're right there. And then the Commanders are 5-5. Five and five. This division is the toughest in football right now. So the Eagles are going to have to stay on top of their game and, more importantly, stay healthy. All right? So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Uh, we're going to get into the matchups later on this week between the Eagles and the Colts. And we're going to see what's what with that. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, let me know if you agree, disagree, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.